here we are guys for big income leaps in case you can't tell i'm very excited about what i've got to share with you today this is one of my favorite topics i've been in business for 25 years i love business i love learning about business i love growing my business i love um, helping others to grow their business and i think that what i'm talking about today is literally one of my favorite topics and the reason is because there's so much um, it's so much about overcoming the inner blocks and the inner obstacles to our success. So I've got so much to share with you. I'm going to jump, jump, dive um, right in. So one of the reasons that this topic fascinates me is I think that not just in business, but just in life, we're so conditioned towards the idea of incremental progress. So I think it starts in school. Well, you know, you go to school, you do, you know, grade one and grade two, and that you, you kind of gradually um, increase and improve. And because of that, I think that we, we, we can unconsciously limit, limit ourselves. We can tell ourselves, well, there's certain things that have to happen or it's step by step. And then you do this and then you do that. And, and it's like a path laid out. And I think that I believe that that conditioning stops us sometimes from seeing opportunities that are right underneath our nose. And the reason I'm excited about being here with you talking about this topic today is because I know that while you're with me right now, there is an opportunity that's under your nose that you either haven't seen yet or you've seen it, but you're not taking action on it yet. And what I want to do in this training today is help you um, start to either uncover what, uncover what that opportunity is or, you know, if you do know what you've seen the opportunity, but you're not taking action, really motivate and inspire you um, to take action in direction of that. Not just for you and everything that you can gain, but how it serves the world, how it serves your clients, your family, your community, by you having that courage to step up and play a bigger game. So the other reason I want to welcome you here is because the very fact that you're here with me watching this live, um, or even like tuning into the replay afterwards tells me that on some level you are ready for a leap. You're ready to make a leap. How do I know that? Because the invitation to join me for this went out to thousands of people and you're here. So just by being here, just by, by prioritizing this in your life today with everything else you've got going on, it's an indicator of, of, of your willingness and your openness for this being a possibility to you. That's, that's, not, um, that, that, that's not a small um, trait at all. That's worth being celebrated. So I'm excited for you, like what this means for you, what this is um, leading to, to for you. So what we're covering today is the mindset shift that creates leaps. People think that having a leap in business comes down to having a clever tactic finding a loophole, having a smart strategy. And yeah, those things may matter, but they don't come close to mindset. I, mindset is 80% of you having a, a, an income leap. So we're gonna be talking about that and I'm gonna be sharing some stories from my own experience. I'm gonna help you see the invisible barrier that is preventing you from making a leap in your business right now. We're gonna get really clear. You're gonna know exactly what it is by the time we get to the end of this live video so that you have a chance to do something about it. And I'm gonna connect you with an action plan for your big leap. So while I get started, do um, you know? please type in below um, who you are, what's attracted you to joining this, uh, joining me for this today. Where are you joining me from? Where in the world are you? I'll come back and check the comments in a second and, uh, we'll, and say a proper hello. So the other thing I wanna say before I get started today is I want you to really listen, in, listen for the thinking behind the leaps. I'm gonna be sharing examples of leaps from my own business, um, clients that, that have made, and I want you to listen for that because that is where the gold is. So first of all, who am I and why am I authorized to talk to you about big income leaps? Well, I've been in business for 25 years and the very first income leap that I made was like a couple of years into my business and I'm gonna be explaining that to you in just a moment because I again I want you to see the thinking behind it and then um, at various points in my business I've doubled tripled quadrupled my business I actually had a baby 
the same year that my business reached a million dollars in business. And again, some of the mindset that I'll be sharing with you now, I'll, I'll tell you more about that exact story and how that came about and uh, like what you can learn from that and how you can apply it to your situation. So um, I've also helped more clients than I can count to have big income leaps. People like Moira who went out and made 30,000. She just pretty much created 30,000 out of thin air in a matter of weeks. And it was a time when it was Christmas, her family were on a skiing holiday, she had sick family members, but I helped her to see an opportunity that was right under her nose and then go out and act on that. I have another client who um, worked with me uh, and just came and did one VIP day. And in the next 18 months, her business went from 180,000 to 600,000 in 18 months. And it was because of key things that we shifted on that day that enabled her to have the leap that was already in potential in her business. You have potential for a, a leap in your business right now. There are only two things stopping you. Either you're not seeing what that potential is or you're seeing it and not taking action. And those are two things that I want to overturn in our training today. So going back to my own story, I started out, my first business was offline. Um, there was no, there was no Facebook. We weren't doing online marketing or anything like that back then. I was working for corporates and I was basically doing corporate training and I had a one day training course where I was selling tickets and we had about 16 to 20 people in the room and uh, everyone paid to come along for the day. And I was teaching them how to get new clients on the phone from this one day training. And it took me a while to sort of figure out the marketing. But on this one day I did this event and it was in London and we had 20 people in the room. And I added up like the value of all of that day's training. And um, even after I paid my marketing costs, because I was um, marketing to fill the room and I paid for all my venue costs, I realized that I'd made 1600 pounds from that day. And at the time, when I, when I was selling my time to clients, and I'll be talking more about time and money a bit later on, but my, at the time, my value to clients, I was getting paid about 500 pounds a day. And I was like, mm, this is interesting. I've earned three times as much money today than I would normally earn. And then that started a thought in my brain. Well, what if I could do this every day? What, what if it wasn't just one day a month? What if I was doing this every day in my business? And um, basically that thinking, what if I could? That, that just asking that question was what opened my mind and, and helped me to uncover an opportunity in my business. And I was like, well, why not do this? Why not just book out a month? And instead of just doing one open day in London, what if I went up and down the country? And I actually put on 20 um, dates in one month. And I, and I went out and kind of did this roadshow. And in that month, I made 47,000 pounds. So I made more that month than I had in my entire first year of business. Now, again, I'm telling you this because the same is possible for you right now at this moment, at this moment with what you've got right now, there is an opportunity for you to make in a month more than you made in the whole of last year. And again, the only thing that's stopping you is you either haven't, you haven't spotted that opportunity, like you haven't seen the opportunity yet, or you know what the opportunity is, but you're not taking action on it. So I made more in a month than I did in a year. And, the, and again, I want you to see the thinking. I basically took something that was already working and I just asked the question, what if I could? And so I want you to know that if you've been in business for more than a year, you already have something similar, something that's already in your working in your business. If you double down on it, it could make you more in a month than you could in a year. But I also want you to notice that in order for me to go and then create that result in my business, the one obstacle I had to work through was the link in my mind between time and money. And I would say in 25 years of running my business and working with thousands of entrepreneurs, this link of time and money is, is probably the most um, important mindset barrier to break through because we do this so unconsciously. We make, we, we make time equal money. And um, what happened in my business 
was that as a result of that, you know, making, you know, I went out and I made that extra money, but that also increased my exposure. I was getting a lot of additional business off the back of those trainings because I had people coming on my one day courses that were like, well, this is great. We now want to bring this in house. So suddenly there was all of this demand. I had more demand than I could have dreamed of. But now I had a new set of challenges because in order for me to go and meet all of that demand, I was still in a situation where my business model was still all based on me showing up in person. So I kind of got what I wanted for, but suddenly I, I was busier than others, busier than ever. And it was like, that was kind of taking a toll. Just felt the wheels were spinning faster and faster. And so that was when I started asking myself a different question. How can I serve clients and add value without showing up in person every time? And asking that question led me to a new answer was how I could package my expertise into actually audio programs that then serve my clients in that way. Now that's evolved in my business to this date, which is now I have online programs which enable me to serve clients without having to physically show up every time. So that was a question that led me first to information, information products and then to an on, on, online information business that has now generated multi-millions. So I, I got to this point, I have achieved this result. I want you to know it all started by asking questions. That's my number one message here for you today. If you want different results, start asking different questions. So um, I overcame lots and lots of obstacles to do this. And I shared with you that I, I reached a million dollars in my business the same year I had my baby. So I want to tell you a little bit about that story. So um, fast forward a few years. So when I started doing these courses, I created then these uh, the, uh, um, information products. So I was serving clients without having to physically show up. And then I figured out how I could start selling these products online. So my business was growing and it was doing quite well. And I, I, was, I was very happy with my results. I was basically earning a full-time income, a generous full-time income, working part-time hours. But I was setting my sights bigger. And um, I was like, I wonder if I could make a million dollars in my business. And it really wasn't about the money. It was almost like it was a, a milestone. It was a challenge. Like, is this possible? Could I do this? So it was like just wanting to raise my game and see what was possible for me. So I set the goal that I was going to make a million dollars in my business. And, um, you know, life has an interesting way. <laughs> There's a saying, if you want to make God laugh, show him your plans. And within like a couple of weeks of setting this goal, I found out that I was expecting my second child. Now, when I found out I was expecting, the first thought, the absolute first thought that went through my brain is, well, there goes the million. And then the second thought I had was, well, hold on a second. If I set my goal to make a million, and then the first kind of thing that happens is that I get pregnant, what if, what if this baby isn't the obstacle to me meet, reaching a million? What if this baby is actually part of the plan? Now, that's a really important thing that I want to kind of kind of triple underline for you here. Like, notice my thinking. Like, my, my default reaction was like, oh, okay, well, you know, you can't have a baby and make a million dollars, so clearly I'm going to have to shelve the million dollar idea. But just staying open to a possibility. What if? What if this isn't the reason not to make a million dollars, but what if this baby is actually part of the plan of how I'm going to reach a million dollars? So I stayed open to that possibility. That was all I did is stay open to that possibility. And lo and behold, like I do credit him. I didn't know it was a him at the time, but I do credit him with me um, making a million dollars. And the reason for that is because it was my second baby. I knew that I needed to get really great preparation in place for, that I wasn't going to be in my business for like at least three months after he was born. And I tried to do that with my first one and kind of crashed and burned. So I knew that I had to have really great systems. I had to now start delegating this kind of recovering control freak. I had to start delegating and start handing things over like never before. I put in some new systems in my business. And I, I remember like I was really focused. Um, you know, I said at the time, if you think working to a deadline makes you effective, try working to a birth line. Because it was like, I knew that he was due in April and I was like, once he's here, I'm not going to be able to do any of these things. So I really moved mountains to create certain situate circumstances in my business. 
And those systems were the, the systems that took my business over a million dollars that year. I would not have made a million dollars if I hadn't put those systems in place, but I wouldn't have put the systems in place if the baby hadn't been coming along. So this is one of the key things I want to offer you in this, it's in this video is what would happen if you started, uh, to see your circumstances, not as obstacles that are preventing you from getting what you want, but as, um, as basically the opportunity. So instead of seeing your obstacles as the reasons not to pursue your dreams, instead of saying, well, you don't understand Bernadette. My situation is different. I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. I know, we've all got them. We've all got the circumstances and the reasons that we think we can't achieve the things that we want. But what if your circumstances, your unique set of circumstances, even if you're currently coding them as, here are the reasons that I can't go for X goal, what if they are the starting point of your unique journey? What if this is exactly how it's meant to be? Like so many people rob themselves of even taking the first step of going for their dreams because they are telling themselves that they need to be in a different starting point. Your starting point is exactly that. It's your starting point. And it's your starting point for a reason because there is a plan for you that takes you from your unique starting point to the dream that you have. But if you are you know, resisting your starting point, if you're saying, well, my starting point is all the reasons why I can't even take the first step, then, then you're not gonna take the first step. But I believe that there's a future you who's looking back to today and going, actually, that was absolutely perfect. That was, that was actually the starting point I needed to get here. So I want you to start to see your circumstances, not as the obstacles that are preventing you from taking the first step, but actually they're like, it, it, like think of it as like the divine, the divine plan that was actually has been um, uh, created for you, for your unique journey. Stop wishing for a different starting point. And know, you know, embrace where you are and know that there is a plan for you from where you are right now, even with all of the conditions you're wishing, wishing away. Like, I know we have people in this group that have big challenges, financial challenges, health challenges, family health challenges. I get it, I really do. I've faced all of those along the way and more. And yet I know that from those challenges, there is a plan for you. So in case you haven't picked up so far, if you came here for tactics to learn a strategy today, yeah, that is about 20% of you having a big income leap, but much more is the mindset. Being willing to get out of your comfort zone, to feel fear, and not force yourself through it, but love yourself through it. Just wondering if I've got time to tell this. I'm gonna tell this story. So my method for getting things done used to be, um, you know, to set a goal and basically kind of like, mm. <laughs> just like force myself, like just, you know, tolerate all of the unpleasantness that goes along with this, like take a deep breath and just like force. Now that's a recipe for burnout. And, and it's not sustainable. Like you might, you might get one leap that way, but it won't be anything you want to repeat. It won't be sustainable. And I had a massive reference experience of this a few years ago when I went on a training with Dr. Joe Dispenza and he had us do this kind of physical challenge. And I was really pissed off and really went into victim mindset about this challenge. Why is he doing this? Why do we have to do this? This is awful. All I'm gonna do is like fill my system with adrenaline. I don't wanna have to do this. And then I heard Dr. Joe say, look, the point of this is not about you white knuckling your way through this physical challenge. That's, that's not what we're here for. The point is for you to realize that you can do scary things. You can do things where your nervous system is kicking up in revolt and saying, no, 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 no. You can regulate yourself through that. You can actually take a breath. You can notice all of that. We're not ignoring it. We're not trying to block it out, pretend it isn't happening. You can notice all of that anxiety, all of that panic and fear, and you can breathe through it. And he actually taught us to like breathe, focused on our heart area, 
and to breathe, to regulate our nervous system and take the next step. And when I completed that challenge, I'm like, I now know there is nothing in life I can't do. And everything I do, every challenge I have, like from, you know, doing poses in the yoga room to business challenges to, uh, you know, handling challenges with my teenage son. Let's not start there. That would be a different Facebook Live. But every one of them, it's, it's the same formula I use, which is to, to get regulated and take a deep breath and then take the next step. That, that's a formula for success in any area. So let's go through some questions I have for you about your leap. So the first thing is, what, the first question I want to ask you is, why climb the ladder when you could leap? So my question for you is, what assumptions are you making about you, business, yourself, your potential, your circumstances, your starting point, what assumptions are you making that is keeping you from even setting a bold goal? I meet so many people, they won't even allow themselves to, to dream of a leap or, or create a bold money goal because they're, they're, it's like they're already talking themselves out of it or generating all the reasons why it can't be done before they even set the goal. So I'll give you one that I see a lot in business, which is, uh, well, I need to have a certain amount of experience before I can charge higher fees or I need to have testimonials. I need to work with a certain number of clients and get the proof. And then once I have the proof, then I can go and uh, charge more and get more clients. So if you're doing that, you are delaying your results based on a thought that is not true. <gasps> How can I say such a thing? I'm going to offer you the opposite. So what if testimony, good testimonials doesn't lead to higher prices? What if it's the opposite way around? That when you charge more, that's when you're gonna get the great testimonials. Why am I saying this? I'm not just being controversial, that was actually my experience. I, for years, the highest priced offering I had in my business was 300 pounds. And, and I was a bit frustrated because I had hundreds of clients and I was like, well, I'm sharing all this you know, content with them and I wonder why I'm not getting sort of more breakthrough results coming from my clients. And then I created a program that was much higher than I'd ever charged before. And suddenly these incredible testimonials started to come through. Now, part of that was because the, the program went into more detail. So I was definitely serving my clients in a deeper way than I had. But I also believe that they got better results because they were more committed. So as a result of that experience, I came up with a phrase, the level of commitment equals the level of transformation. So like, are you creating opportunities for your clients to, to be ultra committed and to really get that deep transformation? Or are you setting your prices um, based on your fear and your thoughts about what people would be willing to pay and what you may or may, may not gain or lose depending on the prices? Because if you are, you're setting your prices and it's all about you. It's not about serving clients at all. So are you creating sexy opportunities and sexy offers that really inspire your clients to step up at a, a, a high level and really invest in themselves through you to achieve that transformation? Or are you like keeping your prices lower than they need to be because you know deep down you don't believe you deserve it or you can't charge that or people won't pay that whatever story you have about it because if so I want you to see that you're doing a disservice to yourself and your clients how we make money in business is because we add more value to more people more often that it's that simple making money all comes down to value exchange and so if you're keeping your prices lower than they need to be that's basically you're running your business based on your fear rather than your desire to serve so question two is what is the story you've been telling yourself about what you need to get done or get handled before you can get to the next level of success? And I would love that if you could share your comments uh, below. Let's see how we're doing with who's here. And uh, so far, Bernadette's here, not Bernadette Doyle, Bernadette Gold, welcome. Just happened to see us when we went live. That's awesome. Love that. Okay. Uh, feel free to drop a comment about where you, who you are, where you're joining us from. 
And also, um, you know, the question is like, what, what's the story that you've been telling yourself that is um, stopping you from getting clients? What is it you'll need to get done or get handled before you can get to the next level of success? What would have happened all those years ago if I'd have said, oh, well, I can't, I can't uh, make a million now because I'm pregnant, so I need to abandon those plans. No, not only would I have not created those systems in my business, those are systems I've been able to go on and to teach my clients to then have their leaps in their business. I basically create, create an example of possibility. I know that that story has inspired so many other women who used to have a story that you can't make good money if you've got a young or growing family. And I've been an example of what's possible. I created value in lots of ways just by not believing my own bullshit. Okay, so the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is the mindset shift. So the big one to be aware of, and I th think this is one that really um, trips up so many people, and I'm, I'm including myself in this, this is one that I work on constantly. The money I make is directly proportional to the hour stroke effort I put in. So, so many people think, if you wanna double your results, you have to double your effort. And if you're at the point I was, do you remember when I said I suddenly had all this demand and my wheels were spinning really fast? Which is a great thing to be in business when you're in demand, but it's also so painful. When you realize there's now more demand than, than you can handle and you're, you're sort of running to keep up. So it just feels like you're on a treadmill running faster and faster. And the, the challenge there is you think, oh my God, I'm already working. I could not put in any more effort than I currently am. So there's absolutely no way that I could even consider doubling my business because I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't increase my effort by 10%, let alone double my effort. And this is what I want you to know. You, you know, if you're doing that, you're actually avoiding setting bigger goals because subconsciously you think the path to getting more equals more hard work, more sacrifice, working harder and longer that you're gonna have to give something up. You know, you're gonna have to give up time or your family you know, uh, health, there'll, there'll be some price that you have to pay. And this is what I want you to know. If you want to double, triple, quadruple your, your business, it comes from stopping doing things, not from adding more. So you know that client I told you that over a period of 18 months, she, went, she took a business from 150K to 180K, excuse me, to 600K. So she pretty much, she more than tripled her business over 18 months but she actually did it with a more streamlined plan. We did that by taking 90% off her to-do list. So it's you, you're not gonna have a big income leap by, by adding more. You have a big income leap by, subs, by, sub, subtract, <laughs> by subtracting, taking away the things that are sucking up your time, your mental bandwidth, your energy, and draining you. They're not adding value. And getting super focused on the place that you know, if you double down on it, would just transform everything. If I go back to the first leap that I shared with you at the start of this video, where I made more in a month than I had in a year, I did that because I found something that was working well in my business. I was I made three times more that day than I typically would have made, and then I asked myself, how do I do more of this? So you, it's about getting streamlined and focused. Here's a um, great. Uh, description of the word focus, follow one course until successful. Some of you are sabotaging, making a leap in your business because you're like an octopus on roller skates. You're going in all sorts of directions. You're trying thing, one thing, you're just sort of like a grasshopper jumping around and you're not actually working a plan. Like you're not actually focused on one key plan and just following that through to see results. Some of you aren't even setting a goal because you, it's like, you're like, well, I, you know, I'm already doing as much as I can where I am. So the idea of adding more just like is overwhelming. And so I want you to know you don't double or triple your revenues by doubling and triple, tripling your effort. You do it by doubling down on, on the key things that are working in your business. And every single person has something that is working in your business. I promise you, even if you can't see it yet, it's there. But by focusing on, on that, and then, um, and then stripping away everything that isn't in service that. So next thing you need to do, you've got to name it to claim it. So I want to ask you like, what, what is the big income leap? Like you type leap to get tagged to join me for this video. 
you clicked on a link to join me for this video. You saw it, it popped up in your notifications. You're like, oh, that's interesting. You wouldn't have done that if at some level there isn't already in your mind a figure, which is like your fantasy figure, the figure that you deep down would really love to make. And either you haven't voiced that to yourself, you haven't either set that as a goal or like you're, you're kind of saying it, but you don't have a plan to get there. So especially women, I work with so many women when I, when I say, like, what's your revenue goal for the next 12 months? I don't get a straight answer. I don't have someone say, well, it's this. You know, I, I get an answer like, well, you know, I've got this many clients and I've got this program and I think if I sell this many of them and add it up. So they, they're telling me what they think they can make based on their current circumstances, right? Your current circumstances are only going to get you more of your current circumstances. If you want to make a leap, you have to think totally differently. And so rather than look at what you've already got and go, well, how do I organize this to make the best that I can? You actually, you are, the way to do it is to go ask your future self, ask the version of you who's already making that money, how she did it, how he did it and, and, and get guidance from there. So stop, you know, asking permission or, you know, setting, set your goals based on what you think you can get and really truly allow yourself to lean into well, this, this is what my, this is my true desire, because this is what I want you to know. When you have like a money desire, because money gets created by, through the sharing and exchange of value, that desire for money is, is, has an equal contribution of value. There's a value that you are meant to be contributing to the world. There's an impact that you have to make. There is a contribution that can be made uniquely by you. If not you, then who? You, like who you are today, you know, with all your perfect imperfections, you know, who, who um, with everything you've got, like with, with it, the conditions that you're wishing away, <laughs> the, your regrets, the things that you, you, you wish, you know, hadn't happened, They've all shaped and molded you to be who you are today, to offer value to the world today. You can make a difference today. You don't need to go back in the past and change anything. You can't do that, it's done. But you today have a contribution to make to the world. And when you figure out what that contribution is and start offering it in exchange for value, that's how you have a big income leap. So know that not only have you got to name it to claim it, but when you claim it, you're actually, you name it and claim it, you're actually contributing to the world. I know that sounds really crazy because we think, this is another mindset piece, we think that money is finite. It's like there's a certain amount of pie and if we take a slice, then there's less for everybody else. And if we take as big a slice, you know, then, then we're taking somehow from others, we're diminishing others. That's the thought that money is a zero sum game. But when we focus on value and creating value, there's, there's more and more value that can be created in the world. And you can get paid according to the value that you're creating. So you're not taking anyone from anyone by dreaming bigger. In fact, you're adding to the world by dreaming bigger and, and pursuing your dreams. You are becoming an example of what's possible. I'll never know how many... I'll never know how many women have been able to be with their kids on sports day or um, run a business from home and be with their children at home because they were able to afford for childcare to come into their home. But I'll never ever know how many women got inspired by my example all those years ago. But, but I know that that added value, just the example, even if those women didn't work with me directly, if they just like, well, she can do it, I can do it too. That's creating value. So you're, you are creating that value for others just by pursuing your, your dream, just by being the example of what's possible. So the other thought, I just want to come back to this, is that you know, this thought of money being proportional to effort. So this is where we resist setting bold money goals because we think, oh, oh don't want to do that. I'm going to be taking on a job and it is something to be aware of. Um, so I've, uh, you know, one of the things that I do with clients is I help them to re-engineer their business. So they're currently helping a client to achieve a result and they're doing it a certain way that's quite labor intensive for the seller. 
that we're able to reorganize that, that we're able to streamline it, we're able to take the time out of it. I have a client called Mikan, and uh, she came on a business retreat with me a few years back. And, um, and in fact, she was about to have a baby at the time that we did this. And she, like, like again, working to a birth line, she really needed to transform what she was doing. And I did one session with her. In that first 90 minute session, we saved her 15 hours a week. So if you right now are resisting um, growing your business because you're like, I don't think I can take on many more clients, I'm already at capacity. You, you, what you have is not a capacity issue, you have a, a mindset issue. And I will tell you right now, there is a way to reorganize what you're doing um, in order to achieve a different result. Now, I want you to trust me on this. So that client I was telling you about that, you know, we were, I was checking in with her recently and we were talking about that initial, initial day, just what a game changer it was for her. And she was like, um, well, I just remember having so much resistance and she really did. Like one of her thoughts were, she's based in Scotland. So one of her thoughts were, people won't come to Scotland to work with me. I have to go to London. So because of that, she was away from home like five nights a week. It was really taking a toll on her personal life. And um, I'd actually forgotten how resistant she was. And like, I just want you to stay open to that. Like I'm putting forward things to you and your brain is gonna wanna argue for your limitations. We'll be coming up with things what you don't understand, Bernadette. My, my situation really is different. And, and so I, what I'm urging you to do, if that's coming up for you, is just to stay open and get curious. It's like, how is that serving you? How is it serving you that your brain keeps, keeps almost like arguing for your limitations? and saying why your situation is impossible. Like, what are you gaining from that? There'll be something that you're getting from it. So, so one of the things that we, we do is like, we re-engineer, we re-engineer the service delivery, but um, that then all can, can become a bit weird because if we have, like our familiar, familiarity is, well, this amount of money equals this amount of work, it can feel strange to suddenly not be working all those hours. Like it can feel like a little bit of a freak out, like if you're not uh, aware of it. So what some people do then is with that extra time is they go and create more work <laughs> for themselves. So you really do have to be aware of that, how it plays out. And I think this ties to, I believe that we all have like a financial set point where we, we kind of, it's like the, the figure that we unconsciously um, keep creating and recreating our mind based on our effort, because that's what we think is possible for us. And this, these are the mental limits that you have to commit to breaking through if you are serious about having a big income leap. So let's talk about some practical things about, just checking time, wow. Let's talk about some practical things about how do you make more money in your business? So if you wanna have a big income leap and you've now taken on board that, um, you can have a big income leap, you've gotta name it to claim it, that your current conditions are not the reasons why you can't do this, but they're actually, they are your unique starting point for your journey. And, um, and you are, you recognize that, you know, the amount of hours you work isn't, isn't proportional. How do you actually make more money in your business? Well, this is where it gets very simple. There's really only three ways to make more money in any business. You either increase the number of leads that are coming in. So like if you've currently got 10 leads a month, you increase that to 20. There you go. Doubled your business. You increase your conversion. So what if you have 10 leads a month and you were converting two to paid clients and customers and now you double that? Well, then you've just doubled your business just by that one change. Or you increase the value per customer. So let's say on average, a client is worth $1,000 to you. Then you, you double that to $2,000. You've just doubled your business. So just making a change in any one of those areas has the potential to double your business. That's how simple it can be. Now our brain doesn't want to go there because our brain likes drama. Our brain thinks, oh no, it's going to be all this extra work. But actually this is what I'm saying. If you just focus in and just really look at what you're doing and you just pick one area, remember what I said about focus on one course until successful, and you make a shift there, just that one thing can double your business. So poor people think that they get paid according to time. Um, Richer people believe that it's about the value they bring to the time. So, you know, if, I, if I'm offering a specialized service in this hour, then I'll get paid more. But the richest people know it's not about time, it's about the value you're bringing. 
So how can you increase the value to your customer? How can you add more value to your customer? And again, how can you do it without you having to work harder or longer? So one way to do it is to create higher value packages. And I talked earlier about, you know, when you have a higher pack, value package in your business, that, that actually it's of service to the clients because you're raising the bar. But what you, it, to do that, you really need to become aware of the, the thinking that is limiting you. So you'll have all sorts of stuff in your brain and like, well, I can't charge more because um, I don't deserve it. Well, what if, what if I don't deliver and they want a refund? Um, what if I can't find people who will pay that? You'll have all of this stuff in your brain that is stopping you from charging more. And so again, I want to offer you, that's not the reason to stop. That's the stuff to clean up in order to, so you can step up and, and charge more. All of those, all of that is just your thoughts. It's just your thoughts and opinions about what's possible, and most of them aren't true. But as long as you keep believing them, you will stay stuck and you won't, you won't allow yourself to take an action. So you wanna become aware of the thinking that is limiting you from making these changes in your business. Whether you're going to increase your leads, increase your conversion, or increase your value per customer. What would be possible if you actually did all three? Like your boom, your, your business would go through the roof. So let's talk about what is the invisible wall that is presenting your income leap or a more accurate way to say this would be the invisible ceiling. So what is the most a raving fan could spend with you? So let's say I went out and I found like your biggest fan and they're like your, your number one client. They love you. Everything you offer, they just, you, they just want more. They've achieved amazing results through working with you. And you know, they're always referring business to you. They're singing your praises. What is the most that they can currently spend with you? That is the ceiling on your income. Now, I realized this a few years ago when I realized that I had a lot of people that were that loved what I did and they wanted more from me. But the ceiling on my income was 300 pounds because that was the most that anyone could spend with me. And what I did was I, I recognized then, oh, my goodness, I need to increase my price point. I have to have a higher value offering. And that scared the shit out of me. Because the moment I realized I had that thought, what came up for me was like, will people pay this? Can I really deliver? Can I really charge that? Do I deserve this? I had to deal with all of that mindset stuff before I could actually step forward and go, okay, this is my offer. This is the offer that I'm putting out there. But the moment I did, it was an offer for just over 7,000 pounds and I signed up 15 people. And I basically started um, the year having banked a hundred thousand pounds at the start of the year having sold that offer right that's a big income leap that is possible for you too and the figure might not be a hundred thousand it might be less it might be more like big income leaps are relative so let me tell you about my client ben who might be here actually watching the video today i don't know but um ben when we started working together just a few months ago he was charging 60 pounds an hour and I asked him in the first call that we did together, I was like, well, what would you, you know, what would you really be, like to be charging? What's the most that you can imagine charging? And I was thinking he could be charging 2000. When I heard about his transformation and what he was doing for people, I was like, I think, I think the price point is 2000. It doesn't really matter what I think. It's what, what's he like, what, what was the most that he could imagine uh, receiving at that moment? And he said, you know, I think I could charge a thousand. Notice 60 pounds an hour, to a thousand, it wasn't a thousand an hour, it was a thousand for a package of services, but it was basically 15 times in the value of each customer. And and sure enough, within a few weeks, he'd sold at that higher price point. And, that, and actually now he's like building on that. In fact, he's done a post in this group about how he's got a vision for a 50,000 um, uh, pound offer. And so Ben is having leaps in his business. Ben has made leaps in his business and is continuing to make leaps because of the thinking. So some of you, your, your price points are way higher than 60 pounds. Like you're already at a price point, so it's all relative to where you are. Like what's the most that a raving fan could invest with you? And what would happen if you raise the bar? And are you willing to deal with all of that mindset stuff and all of those thoughts and feelings that are gonna surface for you as you do that? Because that's actually what's really stopping your income leap is your willingness to process those thoughts and feelings. That's actually the real barrier. So the fastest way to have a leap in your income 
is to increase the amount that you can tolerate receiving in one go. And I'm using that language very deliberately. Why am I talking about tolerating receiving? Because it's gonna bring up your shit. You're gonna have all sorts of stuff surface for you. Do I deserve this? Have I truly earned this? Can I deliver? Will I meet the expectations? Am I good enough? How do I know this? Because I had all the same questions arrive myself. And you know what? Every time I up level in my business, I still have to face this stuff over. I just recognize it's just part of the journey. I don't judge myself for it coming up. I don't go, oh my goodness, I thought I'd already dealt with this. Well, I don't create drama around it. It's like, okay, this is what we've got to deal with today. <laughs> Let's go. Like this, this is the, the new goal. Hearing out all the thoughts and feelings that are coming up in relation to this goal. And now I basically systematically work my way through them and I just keep taking action. I don't let those thoughts and feelings stop me from even starting. I don't let them stop me from uh, before I started. My, the reason that you are keeping your prices lower than they need to be is because you don't want to deal with those thoughts and feelings, right? No, I, when I say what, what is really stopping you from having a leap, please know it's that. It's your willingness to deal with the thoughts and feelings that will surface when you start raising the bar in your own life. And so just know that, know that and then make a decision. You could say, well, yeah, actually, Bernadette, you're right. You know what? I'm still not willing. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. That's an option. But if you are thinking, actually, you know what? She's right. There are things that are stopping me and getting in the way. And you know what? I don't think I want those things to stop me anymore. That's not, that's not a price I'm willing to pay for my dreams or for what I could create for myself or my family or just the inspiration or legacy I wanna leave for others. It's not enough. Stay tuned because I've got an opportunity for you and how, how I will work with you personally, one-on-one. -on -one. It's not a group thing. It's not get clients, make money. It's about how I work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you with this. So um, if you want an income leap, you have to increase the value per customer. You have to raise the ceiling on your income. 20 years of doing this, guys, hands down, the fastest way. And it's also the way I can guarantee that's gonna bring up your drama. <laughs> it's gonna bring up all that mindset. So if you wanna tolerate receiving, one of the things you're gonna to need to learn to do is to expand your receiving zone. So Gay Hendricks talked about this, just checking time. Gay Hendricks talked about this in the, in the book, The Big Leap, where he talked about upper limiting. It's like, what's the most that we would almost like allow ourselves to receive? And it's because, you know, we think that um, having windfalls of cash or suddenly like upgrading our circumstances, we think that that's always gonna be welcome. But because our primal system you know, equates staying the same with safety, it can actually really trigger quite a lot of drama. So you have to have awareness of this as you're making changes so that you're able to deal with all of the things that will come up for you as you up level. Otherwise, you'll end up sabotaging your success. And for some of you, that might have been like the light bulb right there, that you actually have had up levels in the past that you did not sustain. And chances are, is because you are either consciously or unconsciously were sabotaging that because you hadn't figured out how to handle it. What you hadn't figured out was how to manage your thoughts and feelings around it. Good news is that is something you can learn. That's something you can do. So being willing to move through what is unfamiliar. My advice on how you do that, this is how I've trained myself to do it, is I call it conscious effort. So it's not like a forced effort. It's not like, you know what? I've got all of these thoughts going on, but I'm just going to shut them up and put them in the corner while I go this way, right? That does not work. That is not a method for sustainable change. What I've learned to do is I call it, you know, there's a book called Feel, feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. <laughs> I call it Feel the Shit and Do It Anyway, which is like, oh, right. <laughs> I'm going in this direction and now here I am. I've got all of this stuff that's surfacing for me about you know, not wanting to, what's wrong with this, all of the, my, all of the thoughts and feelings. But instead of letting that stop me, I don't dive back under the duvet. I go, okay, you know what? I don't even judge myself for feeling that anymore. Just, well, this is what I got today. You know, what I do is I meet myself where I'm at and go, okay, well, that's great. And I'm still gonna take this one step. Not from a forcing point of view, from like, well, you know what? I can feel shit and I can still take a step. And that's how you continue to make change after main, uh, change. And it leads to massive transformations without sabotage, without burnout. 
what you have to do is make sure that you're balancing your beliefs and your actions because there is no amount of action that you can take that will compensate for a lack in belief. So if you're driving yourself frantic, crazy, doing spray and pray, trying to go and get people interested in what you're offering, because deep down, you don't believe that what you're offering is worth it, or you don't believe you can find clients who, who really want it. If you're taking all of that ac frantic action to distract yourself from that uncomfortable thought, the place to go is not more action, it's to go and clean up the thinking. Because the fact of the matter is, you do have value to offer. There are clients right now who are looking for what you offer and they're waiting for you to show up. And as you commit to taking the first step, you only have to be willing. This is a, a thing that I say, I, I'm willing. I, I have no idea wh what this is or how this plays out. I don't know how, but I'm willing. So many people won't get themselves to the point of willingness because they're like, well, I need to see the whole plan and I need to need, see how it all unfolds and I need to know it. And it's like, you won't allow yourself to say yes until you can see it. But none of us know every circumstance. Look at what's, look at what's happened just in the last couple of years. This stuff happened like none of us could have predicted what's happened like on a worldwide level, but just in your life. I know that there's been so many twists and turns and unexpected in your life and you're still here. You're still here. So the answer is not to try and figure out in advance every step in the plan. It's actually to become someone who is willing to take the next step, whatever's happening, right? And that is a formula for success right there. So talking about action plan, I said I promised you an action plan. And actually, I'm sorry, we've got a little longer, but I hope you're finding this useful today. So first question, what figure do you want to generate in your business over the next 90 days? Like you remember I said, you've got to name it to claim it. And trust yourself, that first thought that came, to, came into your mind, trust yourself, it's there for a reason. You could not be thinking of it if the way wasn't simultaneously possible for you. There is a way for you to achieve that figure, even if you can't see it yet. You know, I, I said to you at the start of this um, video that the two things are stopping us is that you either can't see the opportunity that's right under your nose, or you can see it, but you're not willing to take it because you think that, the price of pursuing that opportunity is gonna to lead to some trade-off that you have to make in terms of time, some sort of sacrifice that you have to make in another place. The next question to ask is like, what value are you gonna offer in exchange? Money changes hands. People will pay you for the value that you offer. What is the value that you're gonna offer that's equal to that amount of money? Like, and you could start to think about how many customers, what price point. Then the next thing you need to think about is like, well, what, what would that look like in terms of like, how many leads would I need to generate and what would the conversion need to be? But that basically there is a, a, like your plan for your big income leap. Now, if you would like me to help you with this, I have an opening right now to work with two people over the next 90 days, one-on-one -on -one, creating your big income leap. And if this is something that you would like to explore without obligation, you want to go to www.bernadettedoyle.com forward slash take action. And you and I are going to get on a call and we're going to look at what your current circumstances are. You're going to tell me what the leap is that you would like to achieve. And we're going to look at how to create that from your current starting point. The conversation will not be about getting you to a different starting point. It's your current starting point, how that's possible. And then we're going to map out a plan. And then I'm going to work with you one on one as you implement and execute that plan and support you dealing with all of the stuff I can promise you is going to come up, helping you to manage your thoughts and feelings along the way so that you can have a big income leap in the next 90 days. So if you want to check that out, you need to go to www.bernadettedoyle.com forward slash take action. Um, I've got, I think, about six slots available to speak to people um, over the next couple of days. So go ahead and book a time. Let's talk. You're going to get value from the call, whether or not we decide to work together. And I say we decide to work together because it's not like you book a call and you're in. It's two people. So I'm going to make sure that I have the people I speak to. I want to make sure that I pick the two people that are going to get the um, absolute best result over the next 90 days. So if you wanna check that out, 
come and uh, come to bernadettedoyle.com forward slash take action. Uh, let's just see how we're doing for comments, etc. Um, welcome to Claire. Paddy's here. Uh, let's see who else is here. Um, Jess is saying, I'm telling myself that my lift is too small. So what if there is a way, Jess, for you to achieve your big income leap over the next 90 days with the list that you currently have? Like, it's possible. Like, just even staying open to that possibility um, will help you will, will help you to start to uncover the possibilities. And often, also, if you need a, a call, come and book it. Right, Erica. Erica's telling herself she needs to have a website. Erica, I've got news for you. I have clients who've reached 100K in their business without a website. You don't need a website to have a big income leap. In fact, um, I would say sometimes there's advantages to not having a website to have a big in income leap. Let's see what else have we got. Um, so Kim is saying, I buy into the idea that the way a business builds is gradual year by year. So that's going right back into that incremental thinking. Totally understandable, Kim. It's like, it's that conditioning that we have. I think it starts with the education system. I fear that my own client base won't pay bigger money. And I think there's something about feeling it that isn't quite the done thing to earn a lot more than you need. Everything you're talking about, really. Yeah. So basically, there are some there are some beliefs there that need to shift. Because here's the thing about beliefs. When you say my own client base won't pay the bigger money, we have in our brain our reticular activating system <laughs> that will literally go and find evidence of whatever we, we say, whatever we focus on. And so what will happen is your brain will actually be finding evidence of that and essentially reinforcing that belief. But like, how do we know that your client base won't pay bigger money? Like, have you really tested it? Have you asked them? What, what if you were just to try? What if you were to um, really get aligned with the higher value you're offering for that higher price and then ask them from that place? Like, so not asking from fear, not asking from lack, but actually selling from sufficiency of like, I have this and it's worth it. And I know that this um, this is going to work for you. That like confidence that comes through. So um, yeah, I think that anybody that this is resonating with, uh, just go and uh, book a call. So hi from Ruth as well. I think that was all the comments that we had there. So final uh, final thing I want to say. Listen, I started today by saying, if you want a big income leap, and I think you're here because you do want a big income leap, there are basically only two things that are getting in the way you either can't see an opportunity that is right under your nose or you can see um, uh, the opportunity, but you are not acting on that opportunity because you're telling yourself that there's going to be something that you don't want to have to deal with as a result. And, and often it's, it's the thoughts and feelings that arise. You do not have to try and figure this out on your own. The value of having another person look at what you're doing is that I can offer you a perspective that you can't see like from your own thinking. I sometimes think when we're sort of stuck in our own thinking, it's kind of like trying to read the label on the bottle from the inside. It's like we we literally can't see it clearly because we are like, we're stuck in our own thinking. I know this to be true for myself. This is why I work with coaches. This is why I, have, I go to coaches to so that they can show me where I'm limiting myself, where I'm stopping myself, the thoughts, the lies that I'm believing, the thoughts and stories I'm telling myself that aren't true so that they can help me kind of unravel those. So that's why I invite you to book a call with me. Let's, um, you know, pinpoint what it is that's getting in the way of your leap. Let's put a plan together for your leap. And um, if we decide to work together at the end of that, then 90 days from now, you'll be back here on a Facebook Live with me, sharing your story and inspiring others with it. So with that said, I hope I'll be talking to you soon. Come over to BernadetteDoyle.com forward slash take action and let's talk. With all my love, have a great day. Take care.